and learn what you have learned. Use the Force, Luke. I want to learn the ways of the Force and become a Jedi like my father. How rude! Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster if you saw it. So one day still alive. Don't give in to hate. That leads to the dark side. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jedi, Sith, everything in between, to another exciting, action-packed, fully stacked, and totally jacked edition of the new, 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 new Force Order for Life podcast, a Star Wars podcast by us. The three sexiest, smartest, most articulate dudes in a galaxy far, far away, a.k.a. the fans. For you, the fans. I am one-third of the NFO. Alongside me, I have the honor of riding with a sinister Sith Lord. And a witty medical droid. My name, if you guys don't know by now, is the Greek god Papadon. Professional wrestler, multi-time champion of the galaxy far, far away. But you can call me GGP. On my left or on my right, depending on how you're viewing this or listening to this, I have a sinister, malicious, pissed off. Vindictive Sith Lord. And on the other side, I have a witty, oh so pretty, thunder-stealing, toy-collecting medical droid. Boys, let them know what's up. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a photographer, a father, and a loving husband by day. But by night, I am. The Dark Lord of the Podcast, the Sith Ari, the Rampaging Revan Kissed. I'm the Butcher, your boy Spiro, a.k.a. Darth Spiridon. And I am smarter than 2-1-B, more technical than FX7, the God of Steel and Thunder. And the man who has no weaknesses, because I never have any faith in my friends. Dr. Destroyo, Alex Arroyo. That was awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna no sell it like uh, super kick on the Indies, but it's okay. It was awesome. But let me ask uh, you this: We have a god of stealing thunder. We got a Greek god, Spiro. You must yes, be sir. the god of hate. The god, the god of hate of and darkness. anger. Yes. All right, that's another moniker we're gonna throw on your broad shoulders. I like that. I like that. But hate leads to suffering. Uh, well, you know. But does suffering lead to hate? But it's all fuel, baby. It's, it all leads, it's, it all leads it's just to fuel. Here is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Do you think the Jedi didn't get married because they didn't want to suffer? Oh, that makes fucking sense. Most, yes, most so. likely, man. You yes, know? so. Anyhow, it's you light weight. Some yeah. some of us some of us must be masochists, especially those of us who have done it two and three times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Hey, Doc, let me ask you this: uh, You go into the refrigerator, you grab a carton of milk, tastes like poop because it's spoiled. You put it back. You gonna open up the refrigerator and drink the same carton tomorrow? Uh, no. Okay, just checking. Um, regardless of that, light news week. On the Star Wars front, uh, everyone is basically sitting back and counting down the seconds, the days, the hours. Uh, Mandalorian is appearing on November 12th on Disney+. Plus, and I can't wait. We've got days, days left. What's today's date? The 5th? 
Sixth? The fifth. The remember, fifth. remember, the fifth of November. Fifth. Is it the fifth? Yes, it, it is. It is the fifth. It's a uh, V for Vendetta Day, boys. Oh, oh Natalie the Portman. The fifth of November, right? A.K.A. Padme uh, Amidala. There you go. There's a the connection. One degree remember, of separation. Remember. Is that, yeah, remember, remember that, you know, sand, it's coarse. It gets everywhere. I don't like sand. Anyhow, um, so you guys obviously excited? Definitely excited, man. I can't wait, dude. Pumped. Pumped. <clears throat> Vanity Fair dropped that kind of little 45-second teaser trailer, which had a few scenes in it that we haven't seen yet. We saw Nick Nolte as uh, the Mandalorian's uh, homeboy Ugnot over there who's apparently in charge of the uh, carbon freezing chamber inside the ship, which is amazing. Um, we saw a new player in the game. The uh, the actress, I think she was... What, what movie was she in? Oh, no, she's from um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's right. She was... Ming, uh, Ming Wang... No, what was the, her name? Uh, the Asian right. chick. Yeah, yes. the Asian chick. Uh, Ming Na Wen. Yes, Ming Na Wen. She's, she's a dope actress, dude. Yeah, yeah. She's awesome on Agents of Shield. Very she's been, awesome. She's been in a few things too, and I don't think it's just been that. No, I know, but I'm pretty sure our fans are synonymous with watching comic books, uh, fandom stuff, whether it's Shield, yeah. whether it's. Uh, she's also in Mulan, apparently. Mulan. Is she? She yeah, made, the, she, the live action. The, yeah. Did that come out? Oh, it didn't come out yet. Yeah. No, right. I don't know. And she is uh, going to play the assassin Fennec Shand. Makes sense, man. Oh, yeah. she's, she's she's really good in action films too. Yep. Supposedly, she's the uh, descendant, no, ancestor of one of the guys from the uh, um, the gangs in uh, episode seven. Oh, the, the Filipino gangs that that show. Yeah, up? not not the guy, not the first gang, the second gang yeah. with all the Asian guys. One of yep. those characters' names. Has the same last name, and they're saying yeah. that this, this, that she's probably like uh, an ancestor to that guy. Got it. Those Sorry. are the guys who were trying to uh, who get got the money eaten back up by the raptor. Yeah, yeah, the raptor. Exactly. That's funny. You know what's funny though? A lot of people don't realize this. In this, this, that scene, all they they worry about and complain about is the raptor. <coughs> Excuse me, a little under the weather this week, but uh, that scene foreshadows his fate. Because uh, he, you know, they Chewie look roars at him, and he goes, "I'm gonna do what I always do, talk my way out of everything." You know, <laughs> I talk my way out of this, and he tried to do that on the scaffold with Kylo, and yep, got so lucky. You know what I mean? That's it. <laughs> so, but uh, the the article Extra came out. hot sauce. No one puts hot sauce on this with lucky, but I do, motherfucker. Anyway, <laughs> I'm Hispanic, baby. I'm sure oh, that's true. Too. That's true. You're married to a Jew. Man, I'll tell time. you, bro. I like my souvlaki only one way. Lemon, pepper, salt, and oregano. Yes. The Greek Very one. rare I put anything else on it. Now, there's other things that, yeah, I definitely like to put my, my hot sauce in, you know? Or I, I should say <laughs> on. In? <laughs> not, not in. Not in. Freudian no. slip? You do have a couple of kids, Spiro. You yeah. definitely put some hot sauce in somebody. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Um, what else came out this week, ladies and gentlemen? Anthony Daniels dropped his book, and uh, people are talking about it. You guys hear anything about it? Because I heard a little tidbit about it, but have you guys heard anything? Any news? Any negative? I I did hear it. It, it came out, but that's about it, man. I heard the title was "Get Me Out of This Fucking Thing." <laughs> <laughs> Um, in it, he, he, he tells how George Lucas was a good dude, but didn't give him the same exact cut that he gave Carrie and Luke, uh, Mark Hamill and, uh, Harrison Ford, uh, regarding the movie. They got points on the back end, so they made more money, just like, uh, like what's his name? Sir Alec Guinness. So he feels like he wished he got more money. He was a little resentful towards that, from what I heard. Oh. I haven't read the book, but that's what I heard. He got a smaller portion. He felt like he wished his character was a lot more. He said he didn't like the last six movies because he felt like C-3PO didn't have a good, a, a, a decent role in the prequels. 
and definitely nothing in the in the in the sequels. He felt like he was like a table decoration. He said, you know, he didn't have a major role in seven. Definitely had no didn't have a major role in eight. Yep. But we'll see what happens in nine. So, what was he expecting to do? I'm just curious. I don't know. I don't know. I heard you know what? I heard he's a nice guy, but he's a he's a typical thespian that wants to be in those yeah. slime, you know. So yeah, one, of those, uh, one of those one of those artsy fuck uh, artsy fartsy fucks. Listen, man, I don't know if, if it if it comes down to him. I don't know. Can can we bl- uh, blame George for that, or or do we blame him? And his negotiation skills or his manager or agent or whoever the fuck. I mean Well no, well put it this way. In you wrestling, know? you know, the main people who used to get paid like downside guaranteed, and then you got a percentage of your merch, percentage of the gate, you know, percentage of the live crowd. So here's the funny thing. There was no never a set formula that they used. So if there were certain people who would get, let's say, sixty grand for a main event on a pay-per-view and let's say in your house and the other guy get 45 grand. And then you find out they go bitch to McMahon or whatever, or talent relations. And then another check would come. So they, you know, they keep the, the, the clients or keep the, uh, the boys happy, the talent happy, because obviously you want to do the right thing or you just got caught not paying everybody what they're supposed to get paid. So, you know, maybe he felt he was underpaid, but at the same time, when you think of Star Wars, do you think of Luke Skywalker, Leia, and Han Solo, or do you think of three CPO first, C3PO first? You know what I mean? He's like a he's like a level B character, yeah. But he, I mean, he's an important character. I'm not gonna take anything away from him. So maybe George says, okay, I'll give you three percent. I'll give you three percent. I'll give you three percent. Hey, uh, Tony, you'll get a point and a half or whatever. It's still better than nothing. If he did, I mean, I don't know. This is all speculations I'm talking about right now. This is all hearsay that I heard online. And you know, folks, just because it's on the internet, it's not true. What? Right. Yeah. So, so oh, at the end of the day, you know what? We, we oh, all shit. love C-3PO, but at the end of the day, I guess he just needs to shut his fucking mouth and know his goddamn role, right? I mean, the fucking bottom line. After three boring minutes, The Rock says, know your role and shut your mouth! Pretty no, he much. Did. He went. You know? He went from being the Rock to Stone Cold in a matter of one sentence. Yeah, I love it. See that? that that's called. Uh, you know, that's called versatility. Ah, uh, very nice. That's a Scrabble word. Versatility. Oh, I wear well, it I mean, when, it, when it, I it, wear the Versace. Yeah, it, it, it took it, me a second to to remember the fucking word though. But uh, you know. Uh, exactly, bro. If you think about it, I mean, the voice is pretty easy to replicate, and you could stick any skinny guy in that costume. So uh, how much leverage did he really have when it came to to doing anything? He probably had maybe a, an inch more leverage than Kenny Baker, <laughs> who, who was in the, the R2-D2 can. An inch more. That's it. <laughs> but, because he, you could stick any little person in that can and be all right. Because um, he wasn't doing the beeps and the boops and the bops. But, yeah, definitely uh, not. I mean, I, I clearly Harrison and Carrie and Mark had much more, you know, stroke than it came to that. So listen, if, if he got something on the back end and points, congratulations. You probably made, I don't know, a couple of hundred million dollars. I'm guessing. Well, he did make a career being C three PO. I haven't seen him anything else in the, in as far as movies here in the states. Maybe he did listen, stuff in the theater in England. Who knows? You know dark, dark shadows. And he's was he really? Busy. I don't know. I'm making it up. Yeah, oh. yeah. Every fucking British actor was. Stereotypical fucking role there, yeah. But you know what, man? And he's been staying busy doing doing the fucking convention circuit. So so whatever, man. I mean, I don't know, man. That Listen. guy could charge a hundred dollars an autograph, easy. Probably probably three hundred dollars an autograph, easy for the next forever, and people will pay him. Dude, and if he wants to, man, he can throw on a fucking costume, a cheap imitation, and do kids' parties, bro. And make more money than any fucking clown or any fag-ass magician and shit. Yeah, bro. You know, he's, he's got his fucking, you know, can you imagine career laid out. Little, uh, can you imagine little uh, Jaime Schwartz uh, gets uh, <laughs> Anthony Daniels to show up at his bar mitzvah? That would be amazing. Just like... Uh, you know, Fifty Cent is doing uh, is doing gigs in uh, in Huntington, New York, for the uh, for the rich uh, the rich kids over there. 
I met 50. Cool dude. Um, I met The Rock the other day. How about that? You didn't meet him. You marked out. You took a you took a video as he's walking by. <laughs> That's right, I did. He's such a mark. <laughs> I, had a, listen, I had a really good week this week. I just want to let you know. Awesome, man. It was quality. Congrats. Good shit. Um, what other th- what was that article you telling me, Doc? That came out. The article. The uh, who's, uh, who's a better Jedi? Who's a better Jedi? So there was some some chatter on the interwebs. With uh, wait, John people Boyega. talk on the interwebs. Uh, it's crazy, right? With John Boyega. Um, yeah, aside from bitch and complain about yeah. shit. Yeah. So uh, recently, an article was published. This is from Movie Web, using evidence from the current Star Wars canon to argue that Rey was a better Jedi than both Anakin and Luke Skywalker. John Boyega decided to weigh in on the matter and took the side of Anakin on this one. Word, the wording is important here, but we'll get to that in a second. Here's what Boyega had to say. I'm sorry, guys, but Anakin's slapping all of us in a pit of lava, including Kylo. Um, and this is, I guess, there was some uh, some debate on Twitter uh, that uh, Ray was a more powerful Jedi than Anakin. Um, interesting. Uh, it's also interesting for some of these actors who are still very deep into the woods of Star Wars, especially with the movie still kind of hanging in the breeze, <laughs> kind of breaking kayfabe and talking about things that may not have been cleared by Disney, which we know Disney is a very, uh, is a very hush hush tight, tight, um, oh, ship when, it, like, when it comes, when it comes to opening your mouth, like fucking spoilers and shit, maybe. Well, just in general, just kind of talking about the product. I mean, we were going to interview somebody who was, Oh, it was Jordan Hembro from, uh, the Toy Hunter show. He also has that Star Wars show that we talked about. We we met him at the um at the at, at Comic Con. At the thing. Yeah, and we wanted to bring him on the show, and he was like, "Oh, I signed a you know NDA with Disney, and I can't do any interviews. I can't do any you know mentions, blah blah blah. No no videos. So, um, it's always it it always interests me when someone pops up and says something about the product that they're intently involved with when it's under the the uh, the Disney banner because. Uh, who the hell knows if they get, um, if they get a uh, flag for that, or if they get in trouble for that? Not that this was a very <laughs> controversial statement, but it still is one talking about one of their main characters right now. You know, our Mary Sue, Ray. I don't think she's a Mary Sue, but explaining how she's not as powerful as Anakin. I thought mm. it was interesting. So you think she is powerful mm. as Anakin? Uh, well, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying to comment on on the face of the Star Wars franchise right now as not being you know, the face of the Star Wars franchise is, uh, I thought it was interesting. So, who's better? Anakin, Luke, or Rey? Uh, hmm. That's a difficult question. I, I think with Rey right now, it's hard to say that until what's, what's today's date? Another six weeks, 40-something days. Um, I think then we'll have the uh, the full answer to that, but if you had to look between Anakin and... No, no, no. You're not, you're not getting the gist of the question. I'm not asking you for an yes. yeah, analytical point of view. I'm asking you for what you think. What does what is, what is the medical droid, the thunder-stealing medical droid, think? Who's a better to you? Who's better Jedi to you? Who's more over for you? And this is not a who's more over segment. No, this is a bonus who's more over segment. Uh, I think... Drop the lightning bolt. Come on. I think Luke is a better Jedi than all of them. Okay, Spiro, you? All right, first of all, I just want to say I wish I had gotten the fucking memo that it's wear a pro wrestling t-shirt day. Oh, you my know? bad. Sorry. You know, I'm the only jackass here that's left out in the wind. You You're know? the dark okay. man. What are you talking about? Relax. Yeah. All right, okay, you know. I... I look like I'm wearing the fucking um, the fucking black sh- scorpion shirt and shit here. You know, yeah, wearing the black scorpion. Nice. Fuck. Anyways, who do I think, man? I think if he'd have been able to fulfill his full potential, Anakin Skywalker would have fucking <laughs> raped all of them, bro. I mean, like fucking turned them all inside out. Okay, but he didn't reach. That's re- the bottom line. He didn't reach his full potential. So well, who's your okay. who do you think all is right. the the best? The best Jedi. Out of the three, I would have to say Luke. Okay. Again, you know, we do have unanswered questions from both Anakin and from Ray. Anakin never fulfilled his full potential, and Ray is still, um, she's still trying to fulfill hers. So, yeah. But Luke, 
Luke, only because he was able to turn the the the, the baddest, greatest Sith Lord of our of all time, Darth Vader, back to the light. You know, uh, like Spiro says, Anakin. To me, this is a toss up because Anakin and Luke are the obviously the top two, but today it's Luke. Tomorrow I may say Anakin. It may be the whole thing like Macho and and, and Henning when it comes to IC for me, or Episode Four and Episode Six being the third just great uh, Star Wars movie. It flip flops, but today it's Luke, and that's the reason why Anakin hasn't he didn't peak. Just like a married man, he came too early. So, but uh, but can can I say that uh, that of all of them, my favorite one would be Anakin. Okay. Fair are, we, are, are we including Anakin as Vader or just Anakin as Anakin? No, because Anakin is Anakin. Yeah, uh, Vader is Vader. It's interesting. Until until Luke turned until Luke turned them back though. Yeah. Whatever was left of him, of, of course. Interesting how that Luke was likely one of two people in the whole entire universe who could have actually pulled that off. And I think for a future episode of this is not the canon you're looking for, we <coughs> we need to do the first episode. <laughs> we 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 should do what if Luke died in childbirth and Leia was the chosen one? How would things have been different? Hmm. Okay, that's a good. Uh, that's good. I like I that. One. I like that. Yeah, I think it's interesting because it, it gives you a lot of different. Listen, I mean, we, we all love our sons, but we're suckers for our daughters. Oh, yeah. Would that have changed things earlier? Mm. I think so. I totally think so. But I guess uh, we'll never know. Well, we will when we do our episode. Anyway, so, Koyega is betting the farm on Anakin. He's going to bitch slap everybody. Kylo, slap us all into a pit of lava. Um, but I mean... To be fair, though, Anakin was a better Jedi. Well, he was he was also trained properly. Yeah. A so little late, was, but properly. Yeah, he had more experience. So if Anakin and Luke had a... a Luke from the original trilogy had a lightsaber duel... Oh, Jesus, bro. Anakin would have ate him up. He would have chopped him out like Barry Harwood. Sushi, bro. Yeah. yeah but, so, but is lightsaber skills the most important thing in the Force? I don't think so. I think Luke was able to probably h harness more of the Force... <laughs> And uh, and use it in different ways than than Anakin had in the past. Anakin was kind of like the brute force to the excellence of execution that Luke was. So yeah, but he's not from we have Canada. To think. He's from Tatooine. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, about? close enough. We Fans, gotta think. No, whatever. What's the fucking difference? But think about this: was was Anakin like that out of fucking choice? Was he like that because he was more of an Adrenaline junkie, a loose cannon. Well, you know? I would think Anakin's like that because, he, like you said, he wasn't more of a loose cannon. I, I, to a certain extent, I can see where you could consider him a loose cannon, but I think he was more of the aggressor, more of the uh, offensive type of individual right. who charges first because there was always the notion he was the chosen one. Sooner or later, you believe your own cool. You start drinking the cool, oh, yeah. you believe your own fluff. So that's why. You live the gimmick. Exactly. Um, Luke was a more of a defensive Jedi. Always on the defensive because he was always the underdog. And he did not know about the Chosen One prophecy, even though Obi-Wan believes he was the Chosen One after Rebels added that into their episode, into the, uh, the canon, I mean. From their episode. But uh, Luke. Between 6 and 7. Still yet to be seen. That's all headcanon. So I mean all we have is. Whatever is going to happen. In the uh, Kylo comic. Coming up. So, But what about this. Didn't somebody pose last week. A similar question. But <laughs> they asked. They, didn't they say. Actually, not a question, but a statement. The statement was that Kylo Ren is a better, I don't know, dark side user Sith, whatever, than, than Darth Vader. 
Now, I ask you guys that. Do you believe that? What is your thoughts on that, and why? Well, the, I think what the, the premise was, they were saying that Kylo is more ruthless than his, uh, than his grandfather because the First Order blew up five planets as opposed to blowing up one, so there's more casualties on Kylo's side, and Kylo struck down his own father. You know what I mean? So, if you look at that from a, st from a statistical point of view, he's up on points. He's had yeah, a better right. on base percentage, you know, better batting right. average. But, he's also a little whiny emo, and he's always having the light call him. While Vader was full fledged dark side, no light was calling him, and was a Sith Lord. Kylo's just a dark side user. He's not a Sith. This guy was not even a Sith apprentice. Full fledged Sith Lord, the greatest Sith Lord of all time. The My true God. champion. The real the champion. champion of the champions. He's a professional. <laughs> what do you think, Doc, about uh, that? I think Vader is a better dark side user. Um, like, like Pop said, uh, Kylo is, again, we still haven't seen the end of it, but I'm fairly confident he's going to get officially called to the light. And for what reason, we don't know. We know the reason why Vader was called to the light, because his son brought it out of him. And his daughter brought it out of him. Um, and he couldn't deal with seeing his children being injured or whatever you want to call it. His daughter had nothing to do with it. Uh, but, yeah, but he knew she existed. So, um, with Kylo... I know we're trying to take credit, uh, huh? What, what's going to bring him, <laughs> What's going to bring Kylo to the light? I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. And I'm, you know, I'm fairly certain that's going to actually happen during, the, during Episode Nine. Just if you look at the cyclical nature of Star Wars. Um, so you're just I, mad that the girl got the Millennium Falcon. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm actually really pissed off about that. I can care less. <laughs> Don't matter. Just give me a good fucking story. That's all I care. And more That's fucking it, Star Wars. Man. You know, for me, this is where you know we got to break K K Fab here for for a second because tomorrow Disney can write him as the fucking guy that. That broke all records. Kylo, of course, broke all records. Killed more people. Uh, they can write new powers that we never heard of from the dark side, and you know they can make him the greatest dark side user ever. You know that's 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 one fucking issue I have when people ask these questions. Is that well, you know, we could say this, but tomorrow Disney's gonna be like, no, you know what? Our creation needs to go over strong and blah, blah, blah. But in my opinion, it's a tough one because at the end of the day, when you look at it, Vader was more of a tool, man. If, if you ask me, I mean, he was more powerful. Um, <coughs> he was full-fledged dark side until the fucking end, of, of course, when he got, got turned back. Uh, all this shit about destroying planets and killing more people and all that shit, it, it doesn't mean to me because at the end of the day, right? I mean, do we prefer quality or do we prefer quantity? There you, know you know go. Saying? Perfect. So I'm going with, with Vader. You guys also went with, with Vader on, on that one. Um, but again, you know, episode nine is coming out, so who knows? Kylo might end up having a big giant giant K on his chest and shit and a big fucking Well, he does have a big big black cape, so whatever. I think a lot of it is also that Kylo is just he's like still hasn't found his place in the whole situation. You know, he feels the light, he feels the dark. He's Kylo Ren getting bitched out by Snoke. Now he's Kylo Ren, I killed Snoke, Supreme Leader. And he's now Kylo Ren. I got my shit handed to me by a hologram. So he still he has all these all these faults and all these flaws and all these you know, all these failures. And he's still definitely doubting himself. I don't think at any point during the original trilogy we saw Vader doubt himself until Return no. of the Jedi. 
at all. Never. Ever. He was straight ahead like a fucking shark the whole time. But he didn't let himself get manipulated by by uh, Palpatine. And uh, Kylo said, pulled a, uh, Owen Hart and said, enough is enough. <laughs> and uh, took time him for, out. It's time for change. Um, time for a change. The, uh, yes, true. But he's still kind of lost in the whole situation. Vader, mm-hmm. Vader was getting, you know, puppeted by, by Palpatine, but for what for, for, for what end? <clears throat> he was fully committed at that point, so he had a master, and he was following his master's, just like the rule of two, he's following his master's, uh, his master's uh, orders. Well, just so you people out there who are listening to this podcast, or people who are watching it on the, on the YouTube, we were supposed to have a special guest tonight. Uh, Justin Incredible was supposed to join us and talk Star Wars. He's a big Star Wars fan, and he wanted to come on and talk about, you know, current events, Star Wars, why he loves Star Wars, whatever. We're just going to have a good conversation, talk shop. Unfortunately, as you can see, or if you have realized by now because you haven't heard him, he's not here. So I haven't heard from him. He retweeted all the retweets this morning that I sent out saying he was going to be on the show. Um, when time was he was supposed to hop on the show, he was gone. So I hope everything's okay with him over there. Uh, but haven't heard back from him. Sent him a message. Hasn't responded. No soldier like a Canadian destroyer in an indie match. But regardless of that, still wish him well. I hope he's okay. So that's why you haven't heard Justin Credible on the on the podcast. Uh, maybe we'll get him back in a later date if he's lucky. So we'll see. Anyhow, um, what I want people to know right now is uh, I want to get into who's more over. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Even with the lame segue, over is a terminology used in wrestling describing popular. So if you're a good guy, you're known as a baby face, you get over with the crowd. People pay money to come see you beat up the bad guys. If you're a bad guy, you're a heel, and you're over with the crowd. You basically are putting people's asses in seats because they want to see you get your butt kicked. So with that being said, we take two aspects of Star Wars, and we compare them. And we say, who's more over? And we... See who's more over with the fans. Most importantly, we see who's more over with us. So there you go. Uh, let them know who's in the uh, in the battle this week of who's more over. So this week we looked at uh, it's called the uh, the battle of the scumbags. On one corner, we have the patrons of the Moist Isley Cantina. Did Rito, you say moist? Not moist. It's what I heard. Yeah, that's what I heard. It's Moose. Moose Isley. Moose. Moose? He's going all Jewish on us. Oh, yeah. That's, that's my Jewish <laughs> friend. I guess, I guess you are what you eat. That's my Jewish. Oh, oh, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> you got me bang, on bang. that one. Have exactly. a nice day. It's, my, it's, it's one of my Jewish friends, uh, Moose Mo, Isley. Um, ah. the, ah. the scumbags in the Moose Isley Cantina. Oh, quick story. Quick story. Oh, boy. Quick story. You guys all know. Oh, I don't know if you know Sparrow, but you probably know. You've you've been to NYWC. Yeah. Uh, my good friend Mega. Uh, King Mega. All right, King Mega. Comes up with a gimmick one day. He was trained by Mikey. Now you remember Mega? He was a big seven foot black guy who wrestled yeah. at NYWC. Comes out with the crown. His theme so, song rocks, man. Yeah. Oh hell yeah, dude! I I, I have it in the I'll car. That shit. I, I bought it on iTunes. The kids dance to it. It's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> So, with that being said, he goes to, to, to Mikey Whipwreck one day. I got an idea for a gimmick. Not for me, but for somebody else. We get a black wrestler. He'll, we'll give him some girl, some, uh, we'll give him a Hasidic Jew gimmick. We'll get him the curls. He goes, and his name will be Saul. S O L. Last name good. So it'll be Saul good. <laughs> Money. Was Money. that a. Saul was that, good. Was that prior to Breaking Bad, but Saul good, man? What? You ever watch Breaking Bad? No. Yeah. Oh. The lawyer, Saul Goodman, yeah. is the play on Saul Goodman. Ah. That was pre Breaking Bad. This is an earlier, earlier on. Great. You're a, even a like great a great character. A great Black character. Black and Jew wrestler. That got his uh, spin off, right? <coughs> All right, Doc. Continue. Just, just don't let David Starr hear about it. Anyway. Stop. I know David. Good dude. Moving on. Carry so. On. Uh, so we have one corner. 
Most he, likely Cantina. He doesn't like you. I'm sorry. I don't like you either. You just watch yourself. We're wanted men. I have the death sentence on 12 systems. I'll be careful. You'll be dead. Versus the dungeons of the Java's Palace. Java's Palace. You know. You know. 50,000. <laughs> What did I say? The, the mighty Jabba asks why he must pay 50,000. Hey, you're dumb. Because he's holding a thermal detonator. I'm dragging it out over here, <laughs> stealing my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Which would include guys like Squidhead and Animan and Bib Fortuna. Uh, Bib Fortuna and Celestial Scrum and whoever else you want to talk about. So we have the battle of the scumbags. Which I thought was a funny battle since there were so many memorable characters inside both of those scenes. Max many you. have made to action figure form. We had a similar fight previously where we had the Max Rebo band versus the modal nodes, but that was music versus music. Now we're comparing patrons versus patrons. Hmm. Pop, I'm going to you first. Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> That's the music. You can't do the music. Enough said. All day long. The cantina, bro. The cantina, come on! It's that you open up, you get all the shots. Even though in the original you get the Wolfman, which got later, later digitalized out. Uh, you get the guy with the horns. <coughs> oh, excuse me. You got the guy you with the tuberculosis. And you got the guy with the bronchitis <laughs> here, coughing up parsecs. Um, Fucking Doc Holliday here. Uh -huh. And then uh, you you get everybody. And you know what's funny? A couple things. Uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, he was on Kevin Smith's show I told you about. He's the makeup artist. Rick Baker. Rick Baker. He did a lot of the masks in that cantina scene. The the, the horn guy, it's his mask. It was, it was a nice little uh, little throwback story, that, that no, little tidbit that no one knew about. And then um, every character in that bar has a backstory, even if he's on screen for a half a second. The one guy, the other human in the bar, with the, was drinking the long drink. Supposedly, he kills people and drinks their brains. That's the that, one who has like the things coming out of his face or something, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So he's it's, like, a, it's, like he's like a vampire or something. Something like that, yeah. exactly. And and he was he was looking at he he picked up the supposedly in the story that he had the guy with the biggest like he the guy he noticed the most in the cantina who was on his radar because of his brain or his wit or whatever, Han Solo. So. You know, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I like Jabba's Palace. Obviously memorable. You got the freaking uh, uh, Rancor. You know, you got the Rancor Keeper crying afterwards. In a memorable scene. You have the Twi'lek that fell into the trap door. You got all the bounty hunters, all the aliens. It was really cool, you know. Uh, you have Slave Leia in the little bikini outfit. So, it's a very close second. But to me... Nothing takes me back more to Star Wars than opening shot, seeing all the aliens for the first time. Because after you've seen it, guess what? See it in another setting. Yeah, I've seen aliens before. It's Star Wars. We, we're, we're accustomed to it. Yeah. But that first time, that first experience, you're like, what the hell is this? You get the chick with the two heads, right? There was a chick with two heads or something like that in there. Oh, or no. no. They were the twins. The twins. That's right. Yeah. I'm sorry. And they have a backstory, too. I mean, Yes, they do. They they really did a fantastic job of fleshing out all those characters in there, either, you know, whatever's canon or whatever's not canon right now, the comics or books or shorts or the toys or whatever. They really, like, I mean, they went around the horn for all those guys. The Snaggletooth, the Greedo, 
the the Wooer the that's the name of the the, the bartender by Wooer. Um, him, why doesn't he like droids? Did they ever go into why? why there he was something them? about that. As I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but there was something about that as well. Why he didn't like droids inside the bar? Um, he caught his wife banging one man. Yeah, exactly. He's getting the golden rod. Um, <laughs> uh, hi yo. And then uh, that would uh, explain C three PO's leg, man. Exactly. You know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to keep it PG. Uh, it's <laughs> too late for that. Know. I realize I'm terrible. I blame Spiro and blame me. Um, the uh, Mamanda Don, who was Hammerhead, they gave him a name after a while. You know the guy what with was the name Papa Don. Mamanda Don, not Papa Don. He's a distant relative of Papa Don. <laughs> Papa the Don. Um, so I, I mean, I, I, that was one of the things for me that was actually really cool. But the problem with with the Cantina scene for me was that it, nothing really super exciting happened above and beyond. The Han shot first, and him cutting off what's his face, Panda Baba's arm. Um, other than that, which uh, I still I still don't know two things with that scene. One, why did he have hair on his arm like a wolf man? And two, why was there blood when a lightsaber was supposed to cauterize the cut? Listen, it's very early in Star Wars. Yeah, but even in the even the special edition, they could have covered that up, and they didn't. Yeah, mm. you know what I mean. Chuck got up to to a mistake, maybe you know. I don't know. You gotta have some blood. I mean, things are gonna leak out a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. I mean, it's not gonna hundred percent quarter right. It have, yeah, it it might have been a fucking bad cut, you know, not you know, not a perfect slice, you know. What is this, a filet mignon? Um, <laughs> so nothing. I mean, nothing. World shattering happened during that scene, as opposed to in Jabba's palace and the patrons that were there. We had a lot of awesome things that happened there. <laughs> yeah, but there's a reason why. I, I, I well, I get it, but for me, I'm picking that to be more over Jabba's palace because the guys who were in there were a little less 70s sci-fi for me. They were a little more Star Wars twist on them. More 83 yeah. sci-fi for you guys. Yeah, well, no, it's just. It, it, at that point, Star Wars had, had solidified itself as a certain look, as a certain brand. When they had those aliens in the, in the cantina, like you said, Rick Baker, you know, he used a fucking devil mask. That didn't make any sense. Okay, fine, it's another species. And you got some guy who looks like a... Yeah, but that shot of him, when you walk in, they show his face. Yeah, he's like... Sets a tone, dude. It's freaky, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what the hell, where are we? It's supposed to try. <laughs> oh, shit. He's got this way. So... Why uh, you do this to me, Demi? <laughs> Reminded me of the fucking exorcist. Exorcist. <laughs> Jesus. Kirillay song, Kirillay song, Kirillay song. So, so just for the uh, the awesome things that happened in Jabba's palace with those characters, with the Gamorrean guards, with the Rancor, with Luke fighting it, with Luke walking in the door and being like, "Listen, I'm rolling out here, son. I'm taking my boys. I'm rolling," which was it, it showed us a Luke that, that was. A, like a, a completely different world from when from when we left him in Empire, and you and you, I still wonder what happened to him in between those times. We know some of the pieces in there. You got his hand cut off. He was pissed. Yeah, <laughs> but that's being, my good hand. That's my good hand. And seeing Luke being a bitch and then get bitched out by Vader and get nearly killed, and then all of a sudden he rolls in the door wearing black, black, which is oh, now it's scary. Is he dipping in the dark side yeah, and coming yeah, in and yeah, kicking yeah, something? Yeah, exactly, Chris Candido, and and rest in peace, man. And rest in peace, yes. total badass. And then the whole skiff scene and the pit, pit of Krakoon. For me, Jabba's palace and the dens is there over. Plus, Boba Fett was there. He theoretically Boba was Fett, in, where? He was in Mos Eisley as well, theoretically. But he was hiding in uh, Docking Bay 94. Okay. Hero. Man. He's a tiebreaker, brother. Yeah, well... This is how I see it, but I gotta say, man, you just gave, you just made excellent points. Almost swayed me, but That's here's the way. I am professional. You are professional, but right. this is the way that I'm looking at it. I'm looking at this like this: the, the Moss Eisley Cantina is like the Wild West saloon of of Star Wars, where That's Jabba's right. Palace is like. It's oh, like the after party and shit. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's like the after back party. To me, Tatooine. Yeah, you know where you go to like some famous guy's mansion to snort coke, bank some fucking hoes, and you know, And listen, man, 
that's awesome. Okay. You mean Thursday? But, <laughs> but the potential and, and and the stories that can come out of the Moss Eisley Cantina. Jesus Christ, man. I'm going with, with the Moss Eisley Cantina. There's a it's it's very close, but I gotta say Moss Eisley. That's because it's a wretched hive of scum and villainy. Yes, it is. The most scummiest and villainist, uh, if that's an evil word, the most wretched scum and villainous people you'll ever meet are hanging out at Mos Eisley. Not at Jabba's Palace. To call a burdello, to pass the seas. Some of my friends are there. Yeah, Trossi is going to pass a burdello. Anyway. I'm going to go to the We're going to need some, some fucking subtitles. <laughs> 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 Δεν τρέπεστε, βρε. Πας στο μπουρδέλο με τον Τζάμπα. Τζάμπας. Γιατί νομίζεις είναι Τζάμπα. Η Τζάμπα νο σκάτα. Anyway. Nice. All right, we got a couple emails regarding this. Listen, people. You guys want us to talk who's more over with you guys. You guys want us to talk shop with you guys. You guys want us to incorporate you guys. Send us an email. It's very simple. Newforceorder at yahoo.com. Whether you want Doc to review a certain figure, you want Spiro to go on a certain rant on a certain topic, you want uh, me to just read your emails, whatever. It doesn't matter. You guys want us to touch on a certain subject? Let us know. You got a question? Send it. You got love? Send it. You got hate? Please, Please send, send it. it. Whatever. We want our show to be incorporating the fans because like we said this before. This show is for the fans by the fans. But most importantly, the New Force Order, the NFO podcast, does not get over on Star Wars. We're here to get Star Wars more over with everyone. And we can't do it just the three of us. Actually, we can. We've been doing it for quite some time now. But we want, to do, episodes. we want to do it with you guys. So... Join, join, you know, join the team. Send an email, you know, live the dream, and be part of the greatest podcast in the world. New Force Order at Yahoo.com. So, oh, we have a first-time email, Tim Gilby. <laughs> oh. uh, hey, NFL guys, this week I am pick, picking Pizza the Hut's Palace. I mean, Jabba the Hut's Palace. I feel for myself that more iconic moments happened here. Excuse me. Talk. Talk. Are you Tim Gilby? Who wrote this, man? You wrote this? Did I'm you read uh, this before you picked your... Oh, God. I smell I, a rat. I swear. I, I don't even access the email. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, you, okay. No way. You have a frozen Han Solo, the Rancor Pit, Slave Leia, in parentheses, is always over for me. The Cantina is cool, but to me, it's just... It just doesn't have the impact of the palace. Yala, Tuttle 17. P.S. Please email me a address. It's an address. A-N, not a address. And total for the shirt shipped to the Great White North so I can mail out a monkey order, a money order to buy an Excel shirt. Thank you. Money right, order? Tim. Tim, what are we, in 1925? I don't know, man. We don't do business with pigeons and, and notes in the feet and telegrams okay. and money orders. Okay, Very cool. simple, Tim. Email us your address. You said you want to XL. I'll see if I have an XL left. I think we may have a couple left. Um, and I'll email you back the price of the shirt. That's including the shipping. So when I send you the price, you don't have to send pay for shipping on top of that. It's all one price. So, Does that also include the tip to Buffalo Bill? <laughs> no. For Pony Express? And I'm, I'm throwing this out there. Uh we got an email from Chris uh, Patilla. Chris Patilla ordered a shirt. He wanted a shirt, gave me his address, gave me his size. I gave him the price, told him once he sends the money, we'll mail out the shirt. So no, I'm, still waiting, I'm still waiting to get the money, kid. You're not going to get a shirt for free. So, you know, follow through. Okay. And, if, folks, if you guys want a shirt, send us your address and your size, and I'll respond back to you with the price of the shirt. And you send the money, we'll send you the shirt. 
It's that simple. You could do it through Venmo, through PayPal, whatever. But anyhow. Apparently money order and uh, Pony no, Express. No, no money order. No, no, if, no if, Pony Express. If you mail Papa Don uh, the price of the shirt in aluminum cans, he will bring them down to the stop and shop. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> One nickel at a time, Tim Gilby. <laughs> Our next email is by Iron Patriot Forty, aka the Hans Master. He's picking the Mo's Isley Cantina. They had a band, hands down. Question for Just Incredible. He's not here. Whose idea was it for you to tag with Lance Storm? Y'all were pop, were polar opposites. Hope you are doing better, bro. ECW for life. Pop it on's favorite friend, Hans. All right, Hans, you got your shit in just to to, to mark out to Just Incredible. Who no showed? So sorry, bud. But you did pick off the most Eisley Cantina, so good on you. Uh, what the poll say? Good Don't... on you, kid. All right. So as we were split two to one, the polls are very similar. Most Eisley Cantina, seventy-one percent to the twenty-nine percent of the Jabba's Palace. Wow, really? Yeah. Right. Interesting. So, oh, so nearly two to one. It was very similar to uh, our split here. Anyway, John M. Wright. The cantina was more iconic, better music, and it was the first time we saw the myriad of aliens in the Star Wars universe. And, in capital letters, Han shot first. Tom Sarabian, better tunes in the cantina. Really, that's his answer. Uh, did you guys see that shirt? It was uh, Leia holding a baby Greedo, and it said Greedo shot first. Ah. <laughs> I, popped, uh -huh. I popped over that one. That was good. Yeah. That's awesome. The ultimate revenge. So, looks like the um, Mose uh, Eisley Cantina wins. It is a pretty dope song. It is. It's iconic. Like uh, the NFL. Anyhow, um, on top of doing Who's Moreover, we have another segment that we uh, like to do every week where Spiro and I just sit back like two marks and get amazed at what Doc shows us. And we call that ta Toy. And we usually do an intro to that, but I'm no selling it. So, what do you have for our ta Toy wow. segment to, uh, today? Damn, uh, no intro. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that we're Cold not doing open. <sighs> All right, boys. Nah, so I'm just driven you. Ta Toy. Ta 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 Toy. Star Wars figures, R2-D2, Chewbacca, Luke, and Princess Leia, they're the Star Wars early bird set of figures. These action figures are not yet available, but this Star Wars early bird certificate package is in stores. With this colorful Star Wars picture display stand and certificate to send in to get a set of figures by mail, they'll be sent to you at home between February 1st and June 1st. The Star Wars early bird certificate package. New from Kenner. All right, I got a few so things. This has been the most in in sync that we've been in the history of Tatooine. I'm Justin Timberlake. You know, no. <laughs> Justin Timberlake. If you got hit by a fucking truck, <laughs> <laughs> carrying a bunch of dildos. Anyway, um, first Ooh. thing. Why? I got the new uh, Star Wars bounty box in the mail. Smuggler's booty. Smuggler's booty. Bounty. Is that why you, you subscribe because it said booty. You thought you were yeah, a piece of ass. Bounty. Oh. Bounty. Yes, I wish. Uh, it's the it's the first order slash Sith pack, I believe. Mostly oh. first order. So I got this neat little analyst pin. I don't know what the hell pin is. It looks like, looks like one, of, one of the new no. logos. I don't know. It's a three triangles. I don't know what it looks is. It's like a piece of hologram oh, or some wait, shit. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. It's a pair of... Apparently one of the Sith logos or one of the First Order logos. I don't know. One really? of the, the box is all the box is all I covered with the, same, with, with the same logo too. So mm. I don't Dude, know what the fuck it is. Calm down. You could be spoiling something right now, Damn, which is bro. a That's first right. on any internet podcast. I've not seen that logo anywhere. First, I'm seeing it, and you're bypassing it and burying the lead. Look at that shit. It's the upside down triangle. Maybe it represents the three the three areas of the force. 
What three areas of the force? It's only you know, the father, the, the sister, and the brother. I don't know, whatever. Oh. Whatever gimmick that is. It represents the three amigos. <laughs> Us. That's the Dora. Force order. <laughs> so there you go. I don't know. Sure, There's not much said about it in the, in, the, in the box. Nothing talked about. Well, who knows? I got a Sith Trooper sticker. That's cute. Very exact. <laughs> we, should, we, we should isolate that drop. That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that? Uh, 105. Oh, I got to remember that. Okay, so uh, I'm a big fan when they give me two pops instead of one pop. You don't get any pops. You, you don't even know how to work. Are they both no Kylos? Speak about no pops. No. So first one is Kylo. Oh, look at that. Shine my light over here so you guys can see. Is the other one Vader? Or this one is Kylo. Oh, I know oh, what the other one is. There you I go. Kylo Ren, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. There you go, right there with the mask all jacked up. He's got the hood up. He's got the lightsaber drawn and pulled to the side. And the second one is the Knight of Ren, a.k.a. the Long Axe. So apparently none of them have any names. So they are the Long Axe. So oh, they do have it, names, but they're just not putting it on the package, they said. It's the one with the kind of skull, almost skull kind of face, if you look into the, say, the side of the box, a little easier to see. <laughs> He's got the long X. The one whose uh, weapon was in uh, Solo. Yes. Yeah, the Quinlan Voss's room. You got it. That's the one. Um, so, listen, who doesn't love Dark Side? That's awesome. So we got two pops in there, a sticker, a uh, pin. And then we got this. Listen, I got more T-shirts than I know what to do with. I could wear a T-shirt every day of the year and not repeat it, but this one is particularly neat. I sent it to you guys over the. Oh yeah, I like that actually. Basically, Kylo with all the Knights of Ren. That's badass, dude. That's pretty badass. That's you know, and they're all they're all in pop form. So love it. You, you usually the pop shirts are kind of like a little light, a little more on the light side, but this one's actually really dope. Now, do you give them a size and they send you your size, or is it all like one? Yeah, no, no. Size? You give them a size, they send you a size when it comes through it. Gotcha. That's cool. Yeah. So, so you <coughs> you get a box every month. I think it's like every two months. How much does it cost? Like thirty bucks shipped. Oh, really? Amazon has it. The problem is, is like you know, it's all a toss up what you're gonna get. It's all exclusive items. So if it's great and you like it, it's awesome. But if you don't like it, like they sent me an Endor box one time, which I was like, oh, this is fucking terrible. Um, an Endor box. So, you know, you're stuck with a wicked pop and you're like, what am I going to do with this shit? So, um, you don't like the murder bears? <laughs> murder bears. Uh, yeah, that's what they are. They're yeah, savages. They, yeah. If you really look at the logistics of what they did in Return of the Jedi, <laughs> what do they do? They capture people, right? They, they put you on a stake like a, like a lamb and a Greek Easter, and they cook you alive. Then they skin you. They don't even skin you before they cook you. Then they skin you, or they might eat, leave you on the skin, leave the skin on a little extra crispy action. They eat you, and if you're wearing a helmet, they'll decapitate you and use your head for a yeah. drum. Yeah, well, they are the murder bears, not the care bears. So that was the box this month. Moving on. I've got a bone to pick with Amazon. Amazon really screwed me over. I bought a couple of things from them, and they really have no respect for collectors who like to keep things in the box, and just like to throw things in envelopes and or small boxes. So when it arrives, it's crushed shit. Fucking this assholes. This is one of the things. I actually returned the one I had because it was crushed as shit, and I got a new one, which the card is kind of bent to shit, so I'm going to return that one too until they learn their lesson. But this is the new Shadow Trooper. It has the Star Wars logo on top. <laughs> Interesting, because we didn't see any Shadow Troopers in Star Wars. It was mostly in Rogue One where we had seen them. Um, Wait a minute. This, Shadow Trooper or a Death Trooper? Shadow Trooper. There was no such thing as Shadow Trooper. In I know. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. What is it Shadow, Shadow Troop Troopers in, um, I want to say, Rebels era, maybe? No. There were Shadow Troopers in Legacy, no? I don't fucking remember. Doc knows. He's a guy. Shut up. I'll tell you. No, I don't know, actually. <laughs> but... Well, you should know because you're the toy collector. So when they release these, they usually put the movie that they're in on top. Like if you look at the next one that we're going to do, the Sith Trooper has the Rise of Skywalker on there. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but I don't recall ever seeing a Shadow Trooper in Star Wars. So I don't know the, the backstory for this. It's basically a black Stormtrooper with the Sand Trooper pauldron on it. 
He's got the yeah. heavy blaster from the Sand Trooper as well, and also the Imperial blaster that all the Stormtroopers get. So I'm not so sure why they put this on a Star Wars card. Um, they did have the Death, like I said, the, the, the Death Trooper from Rogue One, which we did a couple, a couple of months ago, in the same form. Um, I got to do a little digging and figure out why this one is specifically on the old school 77 Star Wars card and not a different card. Maybe, Maybe because... it's a... I'm trying to look in the back. I don't know. Did they send them after Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen? I don't know. Impossible to say, but I will do some digging and find out next week. Still a cool figure. This one's going back to Amazon too until they send me one that's actually decent because I keep it on the card and they're a bunch of assholes. But anyway, sorry Jeff Bezos. Another one from I'm Amazon. Sorry, he didn't pay any taxes. You'd be doing the right job. Another one from Amazon <clears throat> in slightly better but not so great condition is the Rise of Skywalker Sith Trooper. So they have this one, um, which is the new Sith Armor Trooper, which is it's not the warehouse of Star Wars figures that we're seeing, that we were told were somebody sitting on and re-releasing them in different colors. That's bullshit. Um, brand new mold in the Sith Trooper armor, which is different than the Storm Trooper armor. Comes with the blaster, the small blaster, and the heavy blaster. Uh, and there's a special edition one of this one as well that comes with like three or four more weapons. I think for like an extra three or four bucks that Amazon is, uh, I think it's exclusive to Amazon. This one is going to be all over the place. Um, again, old school vintage card. It's got the name of the figure there. It's got the Rise of Skywalker there as well. Um, I, I'm a total mark for these, especially when I see them hanging on the pegs because it takes me back. To 1983, when I was rifling through them in my local pharmacy. You were a spry 47. Yeah, it was exactly. <laughs> this next one was a Walmart exclusive, a Walmart pack that ever so slightly better than Amazon. It's a little bit bent, but hey, I'll manage. But nothing is smashed or crushed. Walmart exclusive, Luke Skywalker in the Yavin outfit when he received oh, sweet. his medal from Princess Leia. Um, he comes with his yellow jacket, not to be confused with the Marvel character. The um, Buzuki outfit. The Buzuki outfit was that when you go to those. Yeah, the, the, the Buzuki outfit. Yeah. Buzuki means uh, Greek going out club. To the, the Greek club. Yeah. the Greek club. I see. I'm, I'm with you guys. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> he's got his uh, long blaster. He got his lightsaber, um, and he's got the metal around his neck. He's got the holster for his lightsaber for his um, gun as well. They're re they're releasing this one uh, as a black series this month as well in two different forms. One is a, a deluxe version, which has more accoutrements than the regular version, um, which is also going to come out in the normal Black Series box. Both of them are in pre-order. I don't know. They're hot in Luke Gavin. I don't know why. Um, this is one of, of many, many versions of this figure that they've been released over the last 20 years. Never released on the original Star Wars line, though, this one, which was an easy one to do. I mean, it's one of the main characters, but I figured, I guess they figured because it was only a very brief scene of him inside of it, they did not release it. Yet they released him in his X-Wing outfit, his Stormtrooper outfit, which is a super rare for you to get um, and find, especially perfect. I have one. It's not completely complete. It's a fake blaster. Um, and Luke Jedi, Luke Hoth, and Bespin Luke they have as well. Um, but they, they never released that in the, in the original line. Last but not least, Papadon had asked me to procure this for him, and I did. Yo, I regret. Yours. It doesn't matter whatever you want. Bro, I regret saying saying tonight. Get me one now, man. I'm Zero. telling you. I can I get you one tomorrow. They're in every single Walgreens. If you walk into a Walgreens right now by what? your house, they're probably there. What time is yes. it? Yes. Every Walgreens. It's past 10 o'clock. They still every, 24. No, no. They're not uh, 24 hours, usually are they? Ten, usually 10 o'clock. Um, I guarantee you. Spiro <laughs> got up and walked out. Oh, man. Uh, I promise you, you could probably walk into Walgreens and find one because every Walgreens I walked into has had at least four or five of them. So. If you can't find one tomorrow, the next couple of days, let me know. I'll pick you one up. I'll let you know, man. Right? Um, for that. So twenty bucks, twenty one seventy five, whatever shipping. It doesn't matter, whichever. Um, shipping. Shipping. That's shipping. Sorry, tax. So this is Clone Commander Obi Wan Kenobi, Black Series, Legendary Jedi Master Obi Wan Kenobi was a noble man and a gifted in the ways of the Force. He trained Anakin, served as a general in the Republic Army during the Clone Wars, and guided Luke Skywalker as a mentor. Yeah. Um, Hello, hello there. So this is him from the <laughs> the Clone Wars cartoon. That is my favorite outfit in all of Star Wars. Not only for Obi Wan, just that that look in general, my favorite. 
Well, you're yeah. lucky because Same it here. is absolutely gorgeous. They use the new space scan technology that they had for the new, like the the, the, the last year, to kind of recreate that digitally recreate the face. It's hard, it, it will not do it justice if you look at it from here, but it is beautiful. It looks airbrushed along the cheek line. The beard looks fantastic. Fucking the eyes awesome. look great. I mean, that's it, beautiful. It just, what is that velvet? Totally pops. <laughs> Completely pops. He's got the stormtrooper outfit with the tunic that comes down. It's actually cloth. Oh, clone trooper. Sorry, clone trooper. He's got the um his his traditional lightsaber. There's also a stand sitting inside there somewhere. I do not think it comes with the helmet. I don't know. I have not I'm not open one. I don't know if you're gonna open yours or not. Um, but uh, I don't open my black series. We know that. But he, it is a fantastic figure. It looks awesome. Everybody's jealous now that this head. Came on this Obi Wan, and buy, people are buying two so they could pop that off and put it on the old Obi Wan that came out from um, the uh, the prequel trilogy, so they could um, have an Obi Wan with a more screen accurate head. This is available now. At Walgreens, you can pop 19, heads like that it easily. You heat up a little bit of water, dunk them in there for a little bit, pop the heads off immediately. It's done. It's over. Um, super easy. Most of these you could actually pop off without without making them making them hot. They just come off automatically. Um, it's one of the best Black Series figures that's out there right now and available right now. 1999 Walgreens exclusive. Walgreens has been coming through with the exclusives like nobody's business. One after the other after the other. Um, they had the Spirit of Obi-Wan recently. They had General Veers. Um, they're just a cornucopia of deals with Hasbro between Marvel Legends, between... Um, Star Wars between McFarlane has a couple of exclusives. They have Arya from uh, Game of Thrones is now exclusive to them. As he fought, as he fought the Night King, uh, they're really coming through and kind of filling the hole that Toys, Toys R Us actually left. Um, but that's Tatooine this week, boys. We got a few things, um, a little a little mix of a few things here and there. We're gonna have a special Mandalorian episode of Tatooine coming up soon for the first episode of Mandalorian. So that's something to look nice. forward to. I got a few things to show. Um, awesome. But uh, those are the things that mostly came in this week. We didn't do anything that was superbly old, which we can at some point. But um, by the Obi Wan, I think that's the that's the, the gem of the Black Series this year. Nice. And, until Walmart gets their exclusive Spirit of so, Yoda, which is also coming out. I got a quick question. We looked at at uh, celebration metal wearing Luke. Why? Did Chewie not get a medal? What's the conspiracy theory behind that? It's because he's a Wookie. He's a Wookie? Yes. Yeah, bro. Racism, bro. That's what it so, is. So it wasn't just the Empire who were racist, then? It was just the entire galaxy, then? The entire galaxy. They're not Wookie sensitive? Nope. Even though they helped in the Clone Wars? Terrible. Well, the interesting thing is that um, uh, MTV kind of righted that wrong, what, uh, 20 years ago? They brought Chewbacca up during one of the MTV awards and gave him the medal. I think they had Carrie Fisher actually do it, too. I think they explained in the comic book why he eventually got the medal. I don't know. Anyhow. They, they didn't have one of size? Is that what it was? I don't know, dude. I was just making a joke. Anyway, that brings our show to a close tonight. Well, hold ladies. on a second. We got one thing I want to talk about. We forgot to talk oh, about. Sorry. There was a photo that was dropped oh, yeah. on the internet. Sorry. Photo dropped on the internet a couple weeks ago. Hey, did you know there was a photo that was dropped on the internet a couple weeks ago? Hey, do you think that the scene where Ray jumps from Endor to the Death Star is just clever editing? Hey, guys, I don't know, but I heard that there was a photo dropped on the internet. Was you guys know <laughs> anything about that? Yeah, I think the photo it might was have a... something to do with uh, Ray jumping and shit. And yeah, you just took and... the words right out of my mouth. He's stealing my thunder, this girl. Ah. So, we love Star Wars canon. A young lady by the name of Heather Ann Campbell, who's verified apparently, go for you, good for you, Heather. Uh, stated that I just learned from Reddit that the framing for Luke Skywalker's highest point oh, of yeah. doubt and fear, in which <laughs> highest point of doubt and fear in Return of the Jedi is the exact framing, same framing that The Last Jedi 
uh, in the last Jedi when he realizes his failure with Ben Solo. The last Jedi keeps giving. So they show the uh, the photo of Luke when he kind of looks down. It's after he chops cuts, down his dad. Yeah, he cuts off his hand and he's sitting there, kind of all um, mad. All, yeah, defeated and beaten. And Luke is like, you know, he's got that uh, the, the anger and the hate in him, and he gives him that look down where he's like all like kind of freaked out and upset and he's doubting himself he's fe- has fear in him and then it's the same exact framing from the same exact shot and the same exact Luke, a look of Luke in The Last Jedi when he was looking down at Kylo when he was just before he ignited the lightsaber. Show us the picture. You got it in front of you? Yes I do. I got it right in front of me. There it goes right there. You look at that. Tit for two. tat. Tit for tat, baby. Ah! Damn! <laughs> You guys know I could have just added the picture to to the edit, you know. So good. What are you talking Jesus about? Christ, man. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> so again, the cyclical nature of Star Wars, bringing it it's back. It's like poetry. It, it is. It is it's poetry. Like... It is, and not all poetry rhymes, but this is poetry that rhymes. Um, it echoes. It echoes. I, I thought that it was. Rhymes. Uh, you know, how many times have I seen that in Last Jedi? A bunch. How many times have I seen an Empire? I mean, a, a Jedi. A bunch. Um, never did I think the two of them were related. But when you look at it side by side, when you see the scene, when you understand it, it makes complete sense. Um, and it's that moment that Luke has. Thank where, you, Mr. Ryan Johnson. Yes. You said uh, I'm a professional. <laughs> Looking for my barf bag. Can't find it, goddamn. <laughs> get that jug of wine, puke it, man. <laughs> Where's my last Jedi shirt? Jesus I, Christ. Again, again, again. It's not the premise of what went down in Last Jedi. I think it was just the execution. That's it. A lot of these people got upset. All these SJWs, all these fanboys got upset at what happened with Luke. But they didn't realize what we just realized. They didn't realize that, hey, in his moment of weakness, he, you know, the, the darkness, because he was suffering from what he, what, he, what he saw, crept in for a split second, and he ignited his lightsaber. Could it have been done a little bit better? Could it have been executed a little bit better? Yeah. Do, uh, do I think that uh, Brian Johnson's a hack? Absolutely not. I think he's a great director, and I think he did a great job with uh, Last Jedi. I think he could have done a better job if he managed a few beats, but that's just me. But at the end of the day, it's cyclical. It rhymes. It's like a circle. It goes round and round. Kiklo in it. What else, no? It's a beautiful circle, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you got you guys okay over there? Yes, we're talking nice. Oh man. So, well, what do you think, Spiro? About about that, about that picture, about the exact framing. Yeah, that it's the same it's... exact look, shot for shot, except he has a beard in one, and the other one he's young. He sold it the same way, so he didn't undersell, he didn't oversell. Yo, do you guys, you know what? You know, what about that picture that just came out like a few weeks ago with Luke Sky? <laughs> oh, my God. All right. I'll stop beating that fucking joke to death. Listen, man, I could be I could be a pure Sith Lord and say that I, I'll sum it up to, to fucking dumb luck on Ryan Johnson's part, but I'm not. Like I said before, I think that Ryan Johnson is a competent filmmaker, competent director. Um. I, hey man, I think it's awesome, man. You know, I you know he he did his homework, I guess. You know, and he somebody did. Yeah, he he chose to convey that same feeling. You know, I mean, and it makes sense because hey, he, he was he was about to fucking sh- strike down his father the same way he was about to strike down his his nephew, and it's beautiful how. And to be honest, man, I didn't catch it the first time around. I didn't catch it the second time either. Till this came out, till till you guys brought it to my attention. So I'm I'm gonna go ahead and give Ryan Johnson a point there. You know, another point towards towards maybe one day wow. high fiving him. You know, 
It's never oh, going to happen, but... Elizabeth! Elizabeth! It's the big one! It's the big one. Oh, Elizabeth! Oh! But... Nonetheless, fuck the last Jedi. Oh, stop it! Okay. You big dummy! <laughs> and... Your favorite... Uh... And with... And with and with me saying fuck Ryan Johnson, I'm probably killing even more fucking potential sponsors and whatever the fuck, fuck them all, man. You know. Everyone but hey, at least hey, the man really is coming out next week. I can't wait. You know, episode nine's coming out next month. Hey, you know. We're we're getting closer and closer. All right, well, boys. Let's let's uh let's let's wrap it up. Let them know where they can find you guys at. You can find me at Dr. Underscore Destroyo, D E S T R R O Y O on Instagram. You can find me on Alex Royo on Facebook. Alex Royo M D on Twitter. Uh you can find me hanging out with The Rock and Cuba Gooding Jr. and Nate Diaz in various different places. Hey Zark. It's in some weird old shriveled up black dude with with beautiful oh, hair. Dude, that was hilarious. Who was bro. that guy? Uh, he was apparently the basis for Earth, Wind, and Fire. But when someone said it was no war, someone said it was war from Star. I, I saw that. I popped. <laughs> I popped. I pop, I'm choking at my popcorn. Oh, man. Uh, anyway, that's where I'm at. Ladies and gentlemen, you can find me mostly on Instagram, Spiro underscore A. Just wrapped up my 31 days of horror a few days ago. Hope everybody had a great Halloween. Uh, Star Wars fans, you can find me also on Instagram, Darth underscore Spirit on, on Twitter, Handsome Reaper. My Gmail is HandsomeReaper at gmail.com. And that's all. You can find me at Greek God Papadon on Twitter, Greek God Papadon on Instagram, Demetrius Papadon. On Facebook, Pro Wrestling Tees backslash Greek God Pop It On is my Pro Wrestling Tees store where you can buy Greek God Pop It On wrestling t shirts. Um, maybe we'll buy one for Spiro because he can wear a wrestling t shirt next time. Uh, <laughs> I could have I gotten my I'm joking, calm GTP down. shirt, you know. Uh, Bit of a heads up next time. I do, dude. I wore this to the gym. Right, what do you want me to tell you? Uh, he's, got the, he's got the stringer on right now. He's got to show those fucking guns. Uh, Greek Op Papadon's YouTube channel. You can find the three of us. All t- oh, you can find me tomorrow, 6.15, on twitch.tv backslash conspiracy horseman as myself, Bin Hamin, Big Sal Graziano, and uh, Stevie Richards talk about conspiracy theories, free thought, enlightenment. We're actually might be doing two episodes tomorrow because earlier on during the day, we're doing a special episode where we're interviewing John McAfee. So it should be a good episode. Never heard of him. You never heard of McAfee, uh, 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 the antivirus guy? He's on all the computers. Oh, you got, no, the guy, the, the guy from the antivirus. Yeah, he invented it. Uh, do me a favor when you get a chance, seriously, because it was brought to my attention. You're not gonna believe this is. Oh boy, what here happened. we go. Go on Netflix and watch the documentary Gringo. It's about Gr- him. Gringo. Yes. Like, you Got know, it. gringo, you know? Yes. So anyway, so that's that. You can find the three of us on YouTube, looking all sexy with our new NFO podcast. The YouTube channel is New Force Order. You can follow us on Twitter at NFO underscore podcast. New Force Order on Instagram, official New Force Order on Facebook. Send us an email to our email address, newforceorder at yahoo.com. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving us your ears and your time. It's been another exciting, action-packed edition. We made the most of what little came out this week, but that's what we do best. We make lemonade out of lemons, but most importantly, we do not get over on Star Wars. Our job is to get Star Wars more over with you. Henceforth, you shall be known as the new Force Order. Like,
chemistry of this atmosphere is unlike that of any other. Any other. Be with us, with us, with us. 